Welcome to Still Entitled, the Adam Sandler Project. I'm Will. I'm Adam. And I'm Norm. Well, it's a Christmas miracle. It is. <laughs> We're here. We're it's making. Not really, it's, a, it's not really a Christmas miracle. It's just Christmas. It's like, Almost. It, it's coming. It's next week. The Christmas Dangerously. miracle is they stuck the landing. They stuck uh, the lid. <laughs> okay, we're going to no, talk, no, 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 no. yes, yes. talk about Watchmen later. Yes, We're going to talk about Watchmen in this podcast. And I apologize podcast. already because I know sticking the landing is should not be the barometer for quality, no. even though no. we have in the past kind of Look, made it as such. Each episode was better than the one that came before it. So you expect the last one to be really good. We also haven't seen Star Wars yet. I think. We have yes. not. So let's, let's, let's acknowledge. I haven't even got my tickets. I, we have like nine people staying in the house over Christmas. Oh, oh you've made gosh. poor choices. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's nice to have friends, I guess. But Star Wars comes out tomorrow. Yeah, I'm not seeing it tomorrow. Neither am I. I'm going on Saturday. Uh, Thanks, Norm, by the way. No problem. I, I bought tickets and oh, then nice. I was able to relinquish the tickets so Will could buy those seats oh, nice. in a coordinated app effort. It was. It oh, was, wow. It was, so you literally, like, you did as he did so. Yes. We were at a party on Saturday night oh, together, no. and I was like, I don't have tickets for Star Wars. Like, Norm looked at Danica and was like, we can solve this problem. And everybody got out their phones. We synchronized the four purchases simultaneously. Oh, wow. It's one of those things where was, the tickets are tied to your name, so oh, I can just hand him yeah. physical tickets. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Like it would be simpler to do in the yes, old days. In before yeah. before yeah. the services. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. anyway, hey, anyway. Uh, you know, last week, one of the things we didn't get a chance to talk about, um, a complete omission on our part, was the, the passing, of course, of Carol Spinney. The amazing Muppeteer uh, performer who spent decades making the world a better place portraying Big Bird. Mm -hmm. Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch. And Oscar oh, the right. Grouch. Uh, and did he also do Snuffleupagus or was that was was that uh was that Jim? I thought Snuffleupagus was someone else, but I don't know. Okay. But but I mean I mean But yes. If if you haven't one of the first things we talked about when we talked about the Muppets here in the early, early days of Still Untitled was you explained how that Carol Spinney Big Bird puppet works. Right. <laughs> and I was just like, that that can't possibly be it and, and then you go and look at the gift. cutaway right right and it's, it's, it's incredible yeah, yeah yeah it's hands up his head's down he's looking at a tv that's in big bird's stomach he's moving one arm with with one the other hand yeah and then somebody else is operating the other arm from presumably behind sometimes or sometimes, or sometimes it's just like a bear in the big blue house it's yeah. on a pivot to the other hand so mm -hmm. it looks natural it's it's, in, it's it's incredible how much humanity came out in a character with such a technically challenged puppeteering job, especially for decades. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, 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 I got to meet Carol Spinney at Silicon Valley Comic Con a couple mm. of years ago. Uh, and he was, as every account of him has attested, the very picture of gracious, lovely, uh, attentive, and sweet, uh, as you wanted Big Bird's um, creator to be. Th there were... A number of people who had profiled or interviewed the Sesame Street, you know, Children's Television, television Workshop, or, or Carol Spinney specifically, who kind of shared stories about meeting him. And and the one that I loved the most, I wish I should have looked up to see who it was before we started, so I apologize. But it basically told us the story of going to do this profile on on CTW. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay. What was that? It wasn't. Is someone yelling? Somebody's out yelling. Yeah, somebody's no. yelling on the street. Oh, cool. Sorry. Um, they basically told the story of him going uh, in to interview this person, and then sending him over to Carol Spinney first. And he had taken off the top of Big Bird and was just wearing the legs <laughs> and was resting. And he he said he t said in the Big Bird voice, "Oh hi, how how are you?" And the reporter just started crying, right. just <laughs> burst into tears. Right? Yeah. Certain people totally. have that effect. I mean, it's the same. I mean, this year was also the year that we. You know, lost Peter Mayhew. So we're talking about character performers. Who's who that? Peter Mayhew. Oh yes. Oh yeah. my God. Characters so sad. Yeah. That were larger than life and and you know big parts of our lives and, and their childhoods. Well, and these performances that outlive the the performers. Yeah. yeah. And I implore you. Extended way, way, way beyond. Yeah. yeah. You know, we had a chance uh, was a lot, two years ago to go to the um, the exhibit at the Museum of Moving Image in New York, in the New Jim York. Henson exhibit, yeah. which is still it's a permanent exhibit at the museum at MoMA, and it's really worth taking a trip out there to go see it. It's yeah. incredible, and it has you know one of the big birds, and wow. I think it was bigger than all of us imagined standing in front of it, even behind glass. Yeah. All I know is how it compares to a Studebaker, so it's like. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, it will. It, it is amazing how long he was able to perform that character. It is yeah. truly astounding. Well, and and the process for training his understudy, his replacement, was a like a ten year process. 10, was it really? Year, they did. They were working together for an incredibly long time. Wow. Yeah. All yeah. the Muppet performers are there. They're they're all treasures. And when, again, also a recommendation for the documentary that Frank Oz Muppet guys talking. Muppet guys talking. Yeah, yeah that yeah. is super super, super fun. Watching. And having hung out with most of those Muppet guys at various different things, hanging out with them is exactly like that. They are. Uh, they are incredibly smart, incredibly sweet. They are constantly insulting each other in the most hilariously s- sweet, egregious way. Oh, boy. I will say, I know uh, you haven't seen Knives Out yet. No, I have not. So this is not necessarily a oh, yeah. spoiler, but it is a another reason to see it is that Frank Oz has a part in it. What? That, yeah. yeah. He has a cameo. He's, I mean, he's the lawyer. Oh wow! Yeah, I never. <laughs> okay. And yeah, he is a. It's a wonderful, it's a, uh, non you know traditional Frank Oz performance, or maybe so. Yeah, he, yeah, he's yeah. clearly having a wonderful time yeah, in that role. He's two two some scenes yes. there. Yes. Every now and then, I mean, uh, you, you remember he's uh, uh, he's the American consulate representative in American Werewolf in London. Wow. He shows up at oh, the hospital wow. to talk to David. This is exactly in line with that type of role. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Just, Just in and out. Showing up to be a like minor functionary out. who's kind of funny. Well, it, yes, exactly it. It's Yeah, it's a character actor, who a character part that's kind of odd, like mm-hmm. in a really mm-hmm. interesting way. Oh, and I remember watching American World in London, and I was such a, uh, an adept of the Muppets. I already knew. I was like, oh, that's Frank Oz. It's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you should see Nines Out. It's really good. I will. I will. I will. I am. We, we don't get out to the movies a lot. And also, I've been watching a crap ton of television. It turns out. So uh, this is the part where we're going to talk about Watchmen, and that's we're going to talk. Well, so let's. Uh, can we also talk about the? Uh, uh, we can also talk a little bit about Mandalorian, which yes, I have not want. seen the last episode. Okay, no, so, so we should do a spoiler cast of Mandalorian once the series yes, wraps. Yes, yes, I think yeah. it'll be ten episodes, uh, something no, like that. Nine or yeah, ten, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, um, it is early this week because of the rise of Skywalker. Oh, so I think we get the episode. Out of the way. Uh, before, not on Friday, because of course Disney wants people in theaters on Friday. I think it's think? actually next. Oh, they push it a week. week. I think they, they push pushed it a, it a right. half week. So it's like the 23rd oh, or so something. Oh, so we get okay. Wednesday and Friday of next week? Something yeah. like that. Okay. Christmas, it's a Christmas miracle. All right. All right. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm curious to see if they're going to try to tie it into the new series of movies, because it takes place between the old one, mm-hmm. the original trilogy and the current trilogy. And that's that why they're a, pushing stuff. A very mastermindy thing for them to do. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, look, the, there are people turning do- knobs and dials. I, I've, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I feel like the last couple episodes haven't been my favorite on the Mando. Oh, um, I still enjoy having such a highly lovely produced uh, 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 fantasy series that's only thirty minutes, thirty, but, forty minutes long. It feels kind of amazing. Yeah, uh, and I, I'm. While some of the episodes captured me more than others, I still keep finding myself thinking, wait until the series airs and watch it again because I think it'll it's going to feel different once I see them all, I, I, I mean, all of a piece. Because I, I'm really enjoying the spit out of the series. I'm finding it a great world to visit. My enjoyment is living and dying based on whether I enjoy the characters that are the other people in the episodes, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. some of them I like. The Gina Carano episode was fantastic with the with the the seven ten. Well, this uh, most yeah. recent one with Bill Burr and Clancy Brown, I I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the. I won't spoil this for you, yeah. Norm, but I enjoyed the twist at the end. Oh, we have to talk about this in a spoiler cast. <laughs> yeah, I have a very different opinion of that oh, twist really? at the end. I thought yeah. it was. Kind of, I I uh, yeah okay yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. To, to, um, be, to be but, continued. Yeah. So to, that's to be continued. Are we going to try to do a Star Wars spoiler cast next week, or are we? If we, it's if like I, two days I, before Christmas, so Gina might be really upset with me yeah, if I, I skip I, out. I, I, I don't. Let's figure out if when everyone will have a chance to see it. Okay. And then we will as, as soon as we all get on board. It. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Maybe just yeah. Maybe think for me. To, maybe we record a pot. Well, we'll talk about that. Okay. We'll, okay. we'll make the, let's let's, let's uh, we'll make our the calendars off mic. And, and schedules <laughs> yeah. and tap into our phones when the camera's not indeed, rolling. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Um, so Watchmen, non non spoilery part of Watchmen first, and then non spoilery we'll part of Watchmen. Watchmen completed its how many episodes? Nine, Nine episode run. Uh, show run by Damon Lindelhoff, a host of different directors. And writers. And writers, mm-hmm. uh, starring Regina King, 
uh, Don Johnson, uh, 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 Gene Smart, Tim Blake Nelson, Tim Blake Nelson, Jeremy Irons, uh, the that wonderful actress that plays Lady True. Oh, uh, Hong Chow. So wonderful yeah. and uh, wow! This episode, you know, I I, I enjoyed a, the spit out of this series. It, I think it's one of my my favorite series, both from a. a I thought I think it's one of my favorite series I've seen from both a technical storytelling perspective. Like I loved all the characters. I love how the world was built. I loved how much they didn't hold your hand uh, because knowing early what knowing having read the Watchmen so much is filled in for you. And if you haven't read the Watchmen, they don't fill a ton in I, or there's there's some there's some gaps I felt like or I wondered anyway. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I love this. It's really out of good, it. and also I think as as social commentary, a really really powerful show. It's, it's one of the, it's not just one of the best series of TV I've watched in ever that I remember. Really, it is impactful in a way that a lot of this kind of TV isn't. Like a su you hear a superhero TV show, and you're like, oh well, I mean, there's there like there's a bunch of superhero TV shows out there, but they're all pretty light or. Or, you know, in the Netflix Marvel stuff, they were hyper violent or they were, you know, they, the hook wasn't we're going to really make you think about a lot of things that aren't people in masks punching each other. Yeah. And and that's I spent more time like th this. This Damon Lindelof has been living in my head for the last nine weeks. Um, <laughs> it's a show. Free, so it's a show that things to say, which was what Watchmen, the original, which was one of the most watching things about it. And it didn't have the exact thing to say that the original graphic novel had to say. Well, the original um, graphic novel was talking about the history of narrative and of capitalism and the, the Cold War the, and the Cold, comic yeah, books in general. Exactly. And and this touched on many of those things, but did it for 2019. Yeah. Well, fear, fear of the... I mean, the, the one common thread is that both of these are about fear, about people fearing things. It was about fearing mm. fearing the well, okay, so, so the communists. I, I, okay, so Damon Lindelof talks about how, and again, this comes out of uh, the Watchmen podcast with him in conversation with Craig Mason, but when he and Jeff Jensen previously of Entertainment Weekly kind of uh, decided to go forward with the idea of writing a Watchmen show, one of the first things they did was throw out words that they associated with the original Watchmen series. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure fear was one of them, but to say it's about one idea no, I don't it, think it's wrong, but yeah, right. absolutely, everyone can take correct. many things about it. You know, one of the big key words they throw out is legacy. Mm -hmm. Legacy uh, had to be you know, original, um, and 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 like th all the kind of things that you would think in the word cloud that go with Watchmen, I think they pulled the right things and then made it their own, including appropriation, uh, because the show itself is an appropriation uh, because it is not sanctioned material. by the original creator. Ah, Alan Moore has no that, interest in this. He, he so he's not done any interviews about it. Not talk no, about it. No, he, no, he, he has, no, doesn't he, give a crap about give, it. Give, give. Oh, he, I think he, he gives has, a crap about it. Right. Okay. Sure. The the, the yeah. reason he doesn't talk about it is to maintain his mental health. Like, sure. That he, makes him angry yeah. to the point that he doesn't want to have anything to do with it's totally. Right. Yeah. yeah. So the creators of the original Watchmen graphic novel, Alan Moore, written by Alan Moore, drawn by Dave Givens. Dave Givens has been in a better relationship with the rights holders, mm -hmm. which is Warner Media, which owns HBO and DC Comics, of course. Alan Moore washed his hands of any adaptation of his work, you know, uh, even going back before the Zack Snyder Watchmen with V for Vendetta. League of he, Extraordinary, League Extraordinary Gentlemen. Gentlemen. That might have been the thing that. That, that was the one that pushed that him over the edge. Well, that would that would have unhinged me. That yeah. was terrible. Not, so not League of great. Extraordinary <laughs> LX, LXG. Uh, so <laughs> he, you know, the only thing people know about Alan Moore today is he would probably he probably voted Labor. <laughs> he huge beard. Yeah, I uh, know. He he uh, actually came out. He did a he did a please vote but Labor video yeah. that didn't really. Have you know, an impact, uh, apparently, I so. will tell you that Neil Neil Gaiman, by every account, and being a friend of his, I can tell you it's true. By every account, one of the nicest human beings alive, uh, and one of the most gracious fan uh, interactors that there ever was, said that he learned everything about being graceful with fans from Alan Moore. Mm. That. Uh, when you say, wow, I can't believe you signed autographs for X many, X many hours uh, while as long as the line lasted, and he will tell you a story about Alan Moore having done it for longer. Yeah. Uh, so, like, less, I had suffered the illusion that Alan Moore was simply cantankerous, 
but the fact is, is no, no, no. With his fans and the, those things, he is a picture of of grace and loveliness, and it's it's important to recognize that there are all these facets. But my my understanding like, is that his his he's so connected to the work that when he feels like the other stuff doesn't. The other people that are working on it don't live up to it. He he just can't. Well, mentally there's no it. there's no point because he yeah. wrote what he wrote was for that medium exactly. for that era and it stands on his own. And I think Damien Lindelof has acknowledged that that while he is he is writing he wrote this show and uh, agreed to do this show purely as a fan. Yeah. And his big takeaway is if people watch the show arms folded and like in you know and it, when the show aired when pr- and premiered and you know not trusting didn't lay off didn't the off's ability to wrap up a series and write a sass for show if they still didn't feel like it hit the mark but felt like okay i understand that damon Lindelof loves watchmen then that's all he really wanted to get out of this he so, talked about that in the podcast and, right yeah and we have had decades now of different executions of taking the storytelling from comic books and putting it into other media. Mm -hmm. And we've seen everything from uh, 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 Frank Miller's disastrous spirit movie Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, 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 the Zack Snyder films, which take comic books almost as a verbatim form and attempt to just make it moving pictures with live action people Exercises in, them. in media adaptation. Same right. with Sin City, Frank Miller to yeah. Robert Rodriguez, you know, li- right. literally taking the panels. They're to evoke the emotion for people, you know, taking the power of the image. Right. Because the, the graphic novel, that media is part of the filmmaking process and storyboarding. They, they, is, share, is. they share a, a, a language, right. but it's not the same. No, it's not the same at all, especially with artists as amazing as Frank Miller and Alan Moore, whose page layouts are legendary in how much they push the form of comic books forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've and had the... We've said before, you know, Neil, Neil Gaiman pointed out, comic books is the only media where you can, the reader chooses and pauses the the image in the story, you know, before turning the page right. to reveal the next image. You can take as much time studying the images. In, in the film, you don't get that option. This was the series, this was the first time I felt, seriously, and I look, there's some things that Zack Snyder has done that are surpassingly beautiful. Whatever you think about the films themselves, I mean, some of the imagery he has brought to life has been incredible. But there were so many points in this series, Watchmen series, where I felt like, wow, they really are like grabbing the comic book. It's like so many points at which I felt like I was reading a comic book. I was in the season finale last night. I was watching that ship take off from Europa. Mm-hmm. Spoiler. spoiler. We're now in tiny spoiler. spoiler. We're, we're, we're in spoilers I'll now. Be spo- I'll be tiny spoiler here. Okay, okay. We're watching that ship take off. All the aspects of that ship, and I'm thinking every one of these shots is like a comic book shot. And even the yeah. delivery of dialogue, I would visualize as a frame yep. at the, in, in the center of a nine-panel frame. Yep. Yeah, exactly. It, 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 the payoff at the bottom, at the end of that se- that whole sequence is the shot, the, the, the denouement of of his relationship with another character we won't talk about yet. Yes. I and really, and, and I that, really that is totally, that. It, it was so good. It was a real I mean, cool lens so to it, watch the show. Clearly, yeah. w- whether that was the the extant uh, intention of Lindelof and his creative team or the buried and wonderful result of them having such fidelity to the original material, because it really does feel, um, you know, I said this a few weeks ago, that third episode uh, which is the, where the where the 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 narrative conceit is um, the entire episode's plot is bracketed by Jean's talking to Doctor mm-hmm. Manhattan, Smart, Laurie Blake, yeah. doing a, a confessional, essentially doing a confessional from one of the Doctor Manhattan phone booths, uh, and really giving you this top level monologue to frame the entire episode. It felt like a, an original Watchmen comic, and as a as the the the, the joke, the comedian joke for that, the punchline happens in the finale. Oh, what is the punchline again? The punchline is the brick falls and hits God and kills God. Yeah. And what happens in the finale? Right. Yeah. Oh, spoilers. wow. Okay, so spoilers? let's get to the spoilers. <laughs> the season finale aired uh, la- uh, Sunday, Tonight. Sunday night. Can, yes. Can, I got to watch it last night. So the, before we, sorry, yep. I yep. said okay. we were going to spoilers. Hold on. Hold on. The Let's, costume stuff, you don't have to hang up yet. Yeah. The costume work 
on the masked superhero, the masked Avengers in Tulsa that were on the cops. Yeah. The Russian guy, yep. the Red lady, Scare, Red Pirate Scare, Jenny. the masked Pirate Jenny, uh, at Looking Glass. Yep. Oh, oh, like the level of delightful jank in those. Yeah. Like the the Red Scare's mask never is quite right. No. Like looking Panda. glass. Nor do you yeah. think you'd have trouble recognizing Red Scare anywhere. You're like, mm. you, you're going to see that guy. He's going to be wearing a red and white tracksuit. Right, even if he's not exactly. wearing his uniform. Yeah. Um, no, it, it, it's like this. The, like all of the people that worked on this, so much work went into these costumes. So much work went into these sets. The, the props, the models, the rocket ships, the flying ships, the return of, of, of Archimedes. Archimedes? The Night Owl ship, the one that you licked? Uh, it's not Archimedes. Archie. 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 Yeah. I think it's short for Archimedes. Isn't oh, it, it could be. Yeah. Right. Right. It'll be um, a hoot. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it, it, it is. It is. Like it's something. I, it's it's just lovely. It's it's lovely to see all that stuff done and writ large and made into a real place. Really agreed. I yeah. I, I and I love like at the top line. I loved the finale. I loved the wrap up of this series. I, so, so like famously now Lindelof said he's only in for one season on this, but maybe eh. Never say never. Never say never. Yeah. They certainly, he they certainly he's left done. the door open. I, I, well, no, I, I, don't, I, I, I don't think they... I felt like so it wrapped up nicely. Pierce, oh, it did wrap up nicely. Spoilers. I think the analogy is given there are plenty of shows that wrapped up where the characters don't die, and of course they live lives, but would it be as interesting to, to, see, to see what happens next? I was going to ask, do you want to say, do you want more? I'm not... I'm like... I'm In much the same way that the ending is ambiguous, ah, I felt like I'm, not my ambiguous. feelings on that are ambiguous as well. It's Don't fascinating that you ask. I didn't consider like if I had control. If you were, the, if you had your finger on the button, um, my answer would be: if the original production team wanted to make another series, I would want them to make another yeah. series. I want less the what happens after the final shot of the finale here and the you know, next week and months of those people's characters' lives. And then I would want another nine episode story with a proper beginning middle and end as they did with this show set in that world maybe not even in that decade in that time but to do what they did with tulsa 2019 and history and 1919 and and and, yeah. and, and, and do that in the alternate world of watchmen i don't necessarily need to know what happens to yeah. Regina King's character. No, like I next. said, I, I'm agnostic on that front, but if Damon and the whole team and Regina King wanted to make another series, holy hell, I would want them to make that series. And I, I think people should pull up trucks full of money and let them do what they want to do. I think that's the right answer, probably. Okay, spoiler time. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to know more time. false starts. Go, we're now going to talk full spoilers for the entire series, including the series finale. Um, we're going to be indiscriminate about this. So if you haven't watched the show, you really ought to watch it uh, and then listen to this. And if you haven't watched the season finale, you should stop right now and watch it. We should we should have a blue light here. <laughs> oh, so you can fast yeah. forward. To, yeah. I can just make noises the whole time so right. people know we're in spoiler time. Okay. Here we go. Um, go ahead, Adam. You know... I I have loved Lady True as a brand new character whose um, whose uh, position within the cosmology of heroes and villains is unknown mm -hmm. until now, uh, and I thought the actress was so amazing in that role, uh, so weirdly believable, like just perfection in terms. Wait, actually, even more believable as a genius gazillionaire than Jeremy Irons. Yes, yes, 100%. You was her, the confidence that she had, mm -hmm. um, the, the wryness mm -hmm. of her delivery and the lines they gave her, and especially in the finale, because you do have a flashback to the first time she confronts Jeremy Irons and reveals his legacy, her lineage, uh, the, the, the turn where she goes from playing naive to be lured in and a fan of his to saying, well, that's just a rerun uh, is, is wonderful acting. Yes, I agree. I, I, I love, I still love Jeremy Irons portrayal as descent into Superman Howard Hughes. Oh, completely. No, no, no. <laughs> it's so it's amazing. And the, 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 the slow reveal of his bizarro encapsul encapsulation in the bubble on Europa and the sending of all of his, minions his adam and eves mm -hmm. into 
the 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 to, to thousands be able to or tens thousands, of thousands of them to spell out that message. Yeah, to, just an incredible and, and such a comic book plot, right? The kind oh, yeah. of comic book plot is like, well, I could draw anything I want. Well, but but <laughs> like the, the thing, the most revealing part of that to me is that Doctor Manhattan thought he was doing him a favor by sending him there. No, he's punishing him. Oh well, it no, was he both. wasn't. It was both. Yeah, he asked for it. Yeah, he I said, get, "I made a paradise. I created life. Right? Well, Do you want to go? Right. I I can't be there. Do you want to go?" And yeah. he sent him there because he was. I got the feeling that he didn't make it clear what kind of prison it was. And he, I got the feeling that he got Veidt's agreement, acqui acquiescence to go, but that that was part of the plan to... I so you think Dr. Him Manhattan's away. punishing him and knew yeah. that he was punishing him? I'm not even sure of punishment. I think he was literally just removing him from... A place he could well, do more harm. I mean, the question is, does plot matter in a world where Dr. Manhattan can see all time up until five minutes before his death? <laughs> well, And it doesn't, because he knows exactly what's going to happen the it, whole way through. It does, because that's the one of the most interesting things about his character, is that even though he has seen everything that happens, minus the window where he voluntarily is uh, amnesiac, and also when he's trapped yeah. in a lithium cage, uh, he still needs to experience it. It's like determinism and in, in, in its, you know, ultimate form. And so there, I saw a headline of an article I didn't go read because internet, but it said, does Dr. Manhattan have free will? Which is actually a totally interesting I don't philosophical think, yeah, the, no. question. And from his perspective, I'm not no. sure I agree. And I would point out that I think actually the one bit of free will Dr. Manhattan does, I think this entire series is predicated on Dr. Manhattan's first meeting with Angela Abar and his understanding that in meeting her six months after they fall in love, she's going to say, what are you risking? And then he is literally going to risk everything. And that I think that the central message of the film is this beautiful description of love as leaving a part of yourself in the people that you just actually choking me up as I say it, um, him leaving the egg for her is both a uh, leaving of his powers with the person most equipped to see the world for what it is and to actually do something good with those powers when and an he acknowledgement did not. because he is unimaginative and an acknowledgement yeah. of his frailty that for all of his ability to see everything he didn't want to be alone when he died yep. and she was there with him it was really incredibly moving do you think he's dead yes oh i do totally oh, yes i i think he's absolutely look, dead he he gets just he gets dissipated in the exact same way at the end of the comic Adrian Veidt traps him in the in the tachyon beam thing in the basement of the Antarctica layer. He gets dissipated and then he puts himself back together five minutes Lady later. Lady True is much smarter and more ca capable than Adrian Veidt. And the device that he's being held in gets destroyed. destroyed. Hmm? And the device that he's being held in gets destroyed. By the, yeah. By the, by by the, the crushing by the, thing. By the frozen squid. Yeah, so presumably Which, his essence is blasted out back into the cosmos. A wonderful moment. That, like that, like the, 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 the turn on, hey, there's squids that Adrian Veidt, hey, there's squids that fall from the sky. We all know that that's fake. We don't know that Adrian Veidt is still doing that for the entire run of the show. Right. And then, and then switching to, hey, we're going to weaponize the squids. Very good. And going to back to her performance, the kind of, the, the fit that she throws when right. they teleport. Every, uh, his her father away when they send yeah. uh, to Karnak uh, along with uh, Looking Glass and uh, and and Laurie, yep. she is so angry because he's not there to witness her brilliance. It's the first emotion and we see from her. It is the first emotion we see from her. And frankly, I had one note about that. Okay, which is I felt that for such a raging narcissist as her, while she shows rage and anger and disappointment and sadness. I feel that rage, that like a blinding white hot rage would be the absolute biggest top note of that emotional arc that she would have. Mm. And I just didn't like for, for I, I have seen angry narcissists in my lifetime. I don't ever want to see it again. Yeah. Uh, but it's real and it's terrifying. What's on the, what's she was right? not terrifying. She was not terrifying. Yeah. And it's the only only point in the in this series yeah. where I felt like I didn't see the thing I thought that should was was the likely thing to happen there. But uh. Holy hell, I also loved this aspect of the writing of both her character and Adrian Veidt, of both of them being crazy intelligent mm -hmm. and the realization that like she spun up the 7th Cavalry to believe that they were doing something only to be serving her needs 
also to hide herself from Dr. Manhattan. She has to mask it, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, and Dr. Manhattan, like, being so, she tells him to the minute when the probe is going to fly over Europa, and he never forgets it, even though she says it conversationally. Mm -hmm. So this is a this is a goofy question. Remember when she goes to the farmhouse and buys the house yeah. from the... What we don't know she, when that is, but that's the return. That's his return five years ago, whenever it was. Met Dr. Manhattan. No, no, no. Uh, her father. Adrian Wright. Invite. Yes. Oh, it is. It is. Oh, so she kept him in the... Oh, because right, the statue is earlier in the thing, yes. and the, she, she kept him frozen. She kept him frozen. She kept him frozen in the gold. In the gold until the moment of her triumph. Ah, oh, so that that ship was disguised as a meteorite yes. landing on Which Earth. Which was also a, oh. a, a itself a call back to the Superman mythology, which is done multiple yeah. times throughout the show because of the About Will Kansas. Reeves. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. They're, they are in Tulsa, but the family that of uh, that the egg farmers that um, cannot have children, right, are and suddenly they are intercepted. Their, their mythology, the Superman mythology of the meteor coming from the sky with a, a life within is intercepted by Lady True because she gives them a baby. And I think their, their names are like something Clark. Their last, it's, it's like oh, the Clark really? family. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. Um, so that is, again, part of the meta-awareness and subversion of uh, of the Superman trope. Yeah. I, I, we're all letting this, yeah. this show <laughs> yeah. wash over I us mean, as we're thinking about I, it. I literally watched this on the plane at 11 o'clock last night, so it's 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 still real fresh yeah. in a way that like, I haven't had time to think about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I watched it. Lori I, I, got the, the, the moments, the finale moments that she deserved. I feel because like she was just kind of keeping her chain to a chair for the last two episodes yeah. is a real waste. Look, I didn't but think that she was any less effective or interesting being ch strapped to that chair for the last two episodes. She was just kind of a bystander watching, and she never she sees that John reaction. Like she has a reaction. I love to that Manhattan. it's her that calls Angela and tells her to get in to shelter. Yes, mm -hmm. I thought that was great. Yes, uh, I love. So I didn't. I didn't even. I felt like she was one of the characters that was slightly underserved. I, yeah, I, her moment was in the third episode in the car yeah. when 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 PD when she says PD explain what what I'm all about and PD just breaks her down in front of Angela in the car ride in the third or fourth episode. Like that that is that is the that is her that is her scene. You know, I also I, I'm thinking about uh, 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 aliens and I'm thinking about. Um, the Abyss, because I think of James Cameron as being amazing at taking characters that are main characters and like parking them for good portions of a film and have them show up later, like Hicks mm -hmm. or uh, the big guy from The Abyss, the guy who like collab like oh yeah yeah right the the, um, yeah, the guy with the beard. So yeah, I didn't feel I didn't feel like Gene was being sidelined. I just felt like okay, she's a witness to this while this while this stuff is going on. Um, the, the 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 payoff to the seventh cavalry, and Completely also actually to realize and a laughing stock and a, a joke of a you know of a, a, a of misdirection of a menace that that was great, totally great. Um, and I love that Will, I love that I believe that Will was on top of this entire plan in its entirety the entire time. Will Reeves, yeah, that he and yeah. Doctor yeah. Manhattan always knew that the egg would be left there for Angela. And that she was the one, and that's what William is saying to Angela. For all that he William, could William do, he didn't grandfather. do enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so that that's like the, that's why I asked: Does plot matter in a story with Doctor Manhattan? Because you know, the 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 Deus Ex Machina of the story is that Doctor Manhattan, in in Cal disguise, before he lost his memory went to her grandfather and said, hey, you got to go do this in like 10 years mm -hmm. and and gave him the whole rundown and told him exactly what to do and how to do it. And and at that point, you don't have, I, I mean, I, I don't think plot matters in a story with an, with an op, omnipotent, omniscient being. Although the making him, giving him amnesia kind of gives you the, the out on that. The tachyon field. Although presumably he knew what was going to happen after the amnesia ends. He just doesn't, he just gets to live 10 years of a normal life, which right. is really a sweet, Kind which of, is a real risk. He yeah. gets to enjoy a beginning and an ending, which yeah. is something that he doesn't actually have. And, and therefore, and, yeah, and, the movie before and the, the show ending begins. is is that's why I think he's gone. That's right. why I think he's he truly did. Right. Like, his, his story his is greatest ended. respect to Angela, to their love and romance, is to die. Is to is to have an end to it. And I, is to experience it. Right. I because feel like that's 
his journey is get to getting knowing the things is different from experience the things, and that's him answering the chicken egg paradox. Just because he knows who will fall in love with her doesn't mean he feels those feelings until he feels that feeling in the moment the when very end. Uh, when she goes to defend him against Seven Calvary. I love that this, bit this where he moment. turns to her and says, "This, this is, is the moment, moment I'm yeah. falling in love." with And that that is his free will, like that that is his ability to self actualize. You know, the thing that he knows. What is going to happen? Well, I also think that while he, you know, that when they interview, there's that condition some people, very few people in the world have where they can remember every day of their lives. Yeah, Mary yes. Lou Henner is mm -hmm. one of them. There's yeah, only yeah. like nine documented, yeah. right? Um, and one of the things all those people tell you is it doesn't help them do their jobs better. They're not like the best lawyer in the world because they can remember every case file. It's it's not what you expect. And so I, I think this is also, the show did this wonderful thing of showing you that while Dr. Manhattan is omniscient, um, his emotions, like all of us, are still in some ways a mystery to him, his emotional drives. And so for him to realize at that moment and say to Angela, this is the moment I fall in love with you, I believe that's genuinely happening to him in that moment as he's actually taking stock of his emotional state. Well, and he just he just feels it for the rest of his life because there's, there's no before or no after. Right, right. Right. Uh, and I really liked uh, that. I loved that wrinkle of him seemingly surprised by an emotion. It's such an impossible character to write. <laughs> right? Like, like That's why I'm happy he's dead. They don't have to write I, it anymore. <laughs> well, but, but also every Watchmen story that's been good to date has been about trying to kill Dr. Manhattan. Oh, well, it's the Loki problem, right? Yeah. Um, it, I once said to uh, 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 Bill Prady, who used to write mm -hmm. for the Muppets, uh, creator of Big Bang Theory and a um, bunch of other wonderful things. Um, I said uh, to him that Rolf was, in my opinion, the only Muppet with no neuroses. Hmm. And he said, no, that's totally true. It's why he's the hardest to write for. And it's why you make him a bartender. Yeah. He just <laughs> listens. Wow. Isn't that fascinating? I... I I, I, yeah, I'm I, I'm just flummoxed. The whole thing, I'm going to go back and rewatch the whole thing with Gina because she hasn't watched any of it yet. She's <laughs> never read the graphic novel, so oh, I'm that's, fascinated that's to the, see that's how... What, that's yeah. the big question of, I think, can someone watch the show, read the graphic novels, and, oh, then, I think they can. and then we'll watch the show again? She, she's seen, she saw the Zack Snyder movie, which I think is maybe not helpful, but no. we'll see. Um, God damn, I loved it. I, just, I, I I would go back and watch the whole thing yeah. again right now. I'd sit down and just do nine hours. I think. Yeah. Uh, hours. I love the way Looking Glass keeps saying, it's not mirror guy, it's Looking Glass. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 like, but like that's such a, like her contempt for costumed Avengers is is so, it's, it's such a good character moment on both oh. of their parts. And it, when she's delivering the, the joke monologue in the third episode and she gets to the third act turn where God's speaking to the last hero and she says, God turns to the last hero and cracks his knuckles. I just, her performance is so phenomenal in, uh, in witnessing what's going on, right? It's like, um, I'm trying to think of the of the show or movie we had recently where a character is brought in just to witness and show the audience what this looks like from the outside. Oh, yeah. What is that? My memory is poor. It will come to me in five okay. minutes. Thank you. Um, it's, but but you're, you're talking about like the the post carrier and clue or something like that, where there's, where there's somebody who walks in, rings the doorbell and you open the front door and they see a bunch of people standing around with knives and guns and blood all over them. And right. And a it's a maid. way for the audience to remember yeah. that this is happening in a world. Yeah. Right. And so Gene is the one watching all this with this super jaundiced eye who still really, really cares as much as she did when she was a costume Avenger. Yeah. Uh, just from a different vantage point. Mm -hmm. Uh, and she's crazy. Again, she is also stupid smart. Like they're all they're all top tenth of a percent high humans, right, right? right? Even the even the bat, yeah. Even the kids, yeah. even Angela's kids. Oh God, the look that the older son gives at the end right? is just yeah. oh. The look he gives as he realizes his mom is Sister Knight and his dad was Doctor Manhattan. That, I, I don't know if he gets that yet, but yeah. It's so the, that there's kid, mystery there that they left lingering. Yeah. Every now and then I see a kid acting on screen and I think, oh my God, you guys all knew that you wrote this hoping that a kid could carry well, this but, idea. But not only the kid carrying that, but also Angela watching him and seeing him start down the path that she's like, shit, maybe that path I've been on for the last 30 years was bad after all. Oh, oh by the way, I'm going to go eat an egg. 
Well, having superhero <laughs> or being a superhero and having kids are incompatible. Well, she, I mean, typically. she didn't start out to have kids. Right. <laughs> Even that's, all, that's what she wanted right. all along. Um, yeah, it's uh, Winston from Ghostbusters. Who? The, oh, right. The, Winston from Ghostbusters is the guy who is the, what's going on here? Oh, my God. This world is crazy. Oh, right. Yes. Thank you, Winston. So, so Winston Zetamore. I mean, the other thing, the other thing, like the, the question of whether the custom Avengers are good and bad and watching Angela's path through that as beginning with, I'm not thinking about this at all and ending with the thing that created the costumed, the, the masked cops, which is the, which is the beginning of the, it's the way this whole thing starts mm -hmm. is the thing that, that ends Dr. Manhattan is a, is a fascinating turn to me. Right, because the White Knight, he he's he's unmasked because of the White Knight because he instinctively reaches out, he protects um, mm -hmm. his family right. when, when they're attacked right. because they're because she's a cop. Right, and then, and then like that's that's the thing that ends that ends Doctor Manhattan. That it turns out that to turns be his out downfall. To be, yeah, right. The, the right, right. Like it's it's a it's a fascinating like the the chain of the, the chain of events yeah the chain of events that ends up with him in Tulsa it's a per it's a beautifully done plot it is, right so it is like perfect. just from a mechanical standpoint it's a it's an amazing That's what execution I was trying to get at. of a Thank plot. you. <laughs> I, I was digging and you yeah. just pulled me right. No, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, you're exactly right. Like the way in which the loose ends all coalesce to bring the story to its fruition yeah. is kind of amazing from a technical standpoint. I, I, I think that's the thing that appeals to me. The, I mean, the characters are lovely. I can't say what appeals to me. To us. It's one of the things that I love is that for, for a, a thing where there's a character to whom plot doesn't matter, the plot is perfect. Right. Right. Well, let's yes. give credit to the actor, uh, Yaya, who portrayed Dr. Oh, Manhattan and Cal. Um, it's exceptional. Yeah. He's exceptional. And Cal. And Cal. Cal a yeah. wonderful actor and a wonderful performance. And when he... Uh, also, full marks to him for spending so much of the show naked. Yeah. Uh, and full <laughs> marks to a show for showing us some real male nudity, which is rare on television. Look, you rare, can't, rare you can't make movies. Watchmen without Blue Dong. That's why I think Dr. <laughs> Manhattan has to be alive. You no, know, I'm just like, I, again, just wow. I, I felt like I'm, I'm watching a, a something an important turning point in narrative in narrative history can, can i you know we were, we I, were that saying, sounds like a really highfalutin thing but i seriously feel like that no i mean it, it, and taste tasteful you know it's tasteful male nudity that's unusual do you think the guy who makes those um the, the you remember did you see the article a few a couple of years ago came out about a prosthetics guy in hollywood who's made prosthetic dongs for actors um that's, that As sounds a, like the worst fucking job in the world. <laughs> so apparently, it was. So remember, Jason Siegel is fully yeah. frontal nudity in, at the beginning in, of Forgetting Sarah yeah. Marshall, and he did this uh, interview where he talked about how to do nudity and how you don't want it to be too cold on set, you don't want a lot of shrinkage, but of course you don't want to be. Uh, tumescent, yeah. as it were. Uh, there's a fine line. There's a fine line. And the way he described it was like, I was thinking to myself, like, my I okay. Um, I, you're, you're, I have more questions than you've answered. Yeah. And then this article came out about this prosthetics guy who apparently makes flaccid uh, prosthetic dongs for actors for scenes in which they don't want to embarrass themselves on a cold movie set. <laughs> I can't imagine. Wow! I can't imagine the conversations on dong approval day. Like well, the he actors, comes in, opens a case, and is like, "Okay, <laughs> wh what do you think? What do you think, Mark it Wahlberg?" Up, it brings up a lot of questions, yeah. doesn't it? Um, but yes, what is the actor's name that played Cal and Doctor? Uh, Yaya. It's, it's a three-part name, but Yaya is his first name. He kept on reminding me of Delroy Lindo. He could play his son in a movie any mm. day of the week. And oh my God, how great. I, I was rekindled my love affair with uh, my, my, my admiration and love of Louis Gossett Jr. He's spectacular. Who like, I grew up with Officer, officer yeah. and a Gentleman. Iron, I watched so much Iron Eagle. Iron Eagle? It's the it's the uh, it's the Air Force's version of of Top Gun. Oh, is it really? Yeah, it was all F 15s <laughs> and F 16s. But he has the best line at the end of the episode where he says to Angela, you know, like you can't you can't you can't hide behind a mask, right? You can't hide pain behind a mask. Wounds need wounds air. Wounds need air to heal. It wounds the air, wound need, wounds need air to heal. Wounds need air. It's a beautiful line. I 
I, you know, we, we, you had said earlier that you thought Gene Smart got kind of sidelined on the last episode. And I, I didn't think so. Oh, I just, Norm, Norm sorry, said that. Norm did. I, I think that the line that she gets when the senator has the Dr. Manhattan pants on and is getting ready to go into what ends up being the mulching chamber. <laughs> Sting's underwear from... It's from, kind from of, doing, yeah. She's yeah. like, those, those panties, you look really stupid in those panties. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a delightful burn on on the, the shittiest character in the whole thing. I mean, And it's also, she, he's wearing Dr. Manhattan's mm -hmm. original mm -hmm. shorts. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. She's just, she's just like, you look like a fool. Plus, actually, I thought his explanation was fantastic. Which was? If, if I'm oh, going to yeah. become totally omniscient, actually waving my dick in their face seems like overkill. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. It's <laughs> very true. Um, you should watch this. If you, you, if you really, yeah. if you haven't watched it, well, really watch up. it. Um, I don't think that even spoilers would take down the enjoyment of it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I've watched a couple of the episodes multiple times already. Really, I'm interested in going back and watching the whole thing from start to finish, knowing knowing the entire sequence and seeing what what what's different this go around. It's, uh, yeah, and you, you know, there were times when I was watching uh, Ron Moore's reboot of Battlestar Galactica, and I was thinking, oh. wow. Um, this is some of the most uh, intense social commentary I've ever come across in narrative form. Uh, Watchmen was like that times three. Well, it's t 15 years later. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I, and I think that, you know, Ron Moore, uh, uh, they, they owe a debt of gratitude to Ron Moore and other, uh, other people, who've, especially within the science fiction realm. Because it really seems to be this great Trojan horse that gets social commentary past your cognitive filters of like I am teaching you a lesson. I don't. In a this is very, very I'm not thoughtful gonna, way. Yeah. That's way beyond the you know rip from the headlines procedural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also I feel like uh, Watchmen leaves a lot of opinions unanswered. I think Watchmen has. I think I think the show itself doesn't necessarily feel. 100% one way or the other about mask wearing. I think they're talking about the ways in which it serves and doesn't serve. And while it tends to take a stance against the masks, uh, I think that they're also, like they're not exactly sure how they feel about everything. And that's also extant in the narrative. And I really, I appreciate that. Well, I mean, I think individual characters feel strongly, like Laurie clearly is a is a pretty anti the vigilante yeah. mask wearer. But but most of the rest of the it's it, there's there's an appropriate amount of ambiguity at the ending of the show for a Watchman I think yeah and that's a good place as any to end yeah. well uh, it was Chris <laughs> a Christmas miracle <laughs> anything cool on the site this week Norm uh, maybe later this week yes uh, we should actually have a great video uh, Adam visited the far out exhibit at the SF MoMA in which Ooh. Adam's few of Adam's costumes. Are there? I keep getting these tweets space where suits? people are like, "Hey, I saw some great spacesuits at an exhibit. I was going to take a picture of them and send them to you, and then I read the tag and saw that they're yours." Yeah. My <laughs> sister-in-law had that sent me that. She's like, "Hey, does Adam know about these cool spacesuits at the moment?" I was like, "Look at the tag." She's like, "Oh." <laughs> Uh, it was a beautiful exhibit, and Joseph Becker took us through it. It was stunning. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, we uh, we are we got some things in the can this I week know. that will air in January. There's some really really fun stuff being plotted and planned for next year. Seriously, um, 2020 is shaping up to be a, a ginormous year for Tested uh, in all of the fronts that we play in. And I'm I'm really excited to start unveiling the different aspects. How long are the spacesuits at MoMA at SF MoMA? Uh, Until January, late 20th? January, late January. January okay. 20th, yep. So you still have time. To take take uh, go uh, over your holiday break. Check it out. The new wing uh, of the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art is fantastic. There's some giant, magnificent Anselm Kiefer's in a room real near that. Um, you'll get you get to see uh, an entire Tom Sachs suit construction, all of the parts. Oh wow! At the front piece, that's the Ooh. front piece of the far out exhibit. <sighs> Oh, it's stunning. I gotta go. I haven't been. I haven't been yet. So I'll have yeah. to go. Yeah. All right. Check that out on Tested. Thanks, Will. Um, if we Bye, don't everybody. get a podcast in before next week, I think we should get yeah, in. We one. should. We should we'll get in get one, one air next week. Exactly. Yep. And, and, yep. and yep. It, you know, could be a Star Wars discussion, or could just be a wrap up the end of the year and decade. Indeed. Wow. Right. Yeah. The end of the decade. All right. It's been okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stick the landing. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys.